Welcome to Greenhorn Linux. Linux for Greenhorns. On this episode of Greenhorn Linux, Adam explains what the Master Boot Record is all about. It is also known as MBR for short. Hmm, I wonder what is so important about this MBR thingy. Unfortunately, this is somewhat of a complex topic. Now, if you want to set up a dual boot environment, it's very important that you understand some of the basics of booting and some of the concepts of NBR. Uh, also note, NBR stands for Master Boot Record. So if you're only running one operating system, let's say Windows operating system, uh, more than likely you've never encountered the NBR. And this is because Windows automatically kind of bypasses the NBR. And what the MBR just allows you to do is if you have multiple operating systems installed, at that point it allows you to choose which operating system you'd like to boot into. Now most MBRs are installed on the very first uh, sector uh, of your hard drive. And so therefore when you're booting in, uh, up, the MBR is the very, very first thing that is seen by your computer. But before we get into that, uh, let's look at uh, the sequence of booting for a computer so that way you can understand the whole chain of events that is happening during boot up. The very first thing we do is give power to the PC. So that's turning on your PC. Then the basic input output system, uh, also known as BIOS, kicks in. The power on self test is triggered, uh, also known as post. Now, at this point, if POST fails, then your computer booting up comes to a grinding halt. Uh, this could be caused by a variety of hardware issues, missing keyboard, hardware drive, video card, memory issues, and many other factors. Uh, at this stage, if your computer fails uh, boot, booting up at this point, it's usually a hardware issue. Now, once the POST passes, we move to the next stage, boot sequence, and this can be adjusted by the end user. This is uh, where we tell the computer where to look for some sort of MBR. In this example, you can see I have set the CD-ROM to boot first. If the computer doesn't detect a CD-ROM that is bootable, it goes down the list until it hits something that is bootable. Now here is why we always need to check the boot order uh, if you want to boot from a CD. Even if you have a CD-ROM that is bootable, but it is below your hard drive, well, you can see from this diagram that the hard drive will always boot first. This is why on my computer I always leave the CD-ROM and USB at the top of my list, so I don't have to run into these issues. Now, the downside to this approach is that it takes slightly longer to reboot as the BIOS is always checking the CD-ROM before it boots from the physical hard drive. I really don't notice it, so this is why I just leave it as is. If you want a faster boot, then you can adjust this. If you want to adjust your boot order, check out the link below, uh, as this is how you would change your boot order. Okay, so for this example, we will boot from our hard drive. If it passes and detects an MBR, you will boot into, for example, Windows. If something is wrong with your bootloader, or MBR, then it simply won't boot, and it could look something like this. Notice the blinking cursor as it fails to boot into an OS. Now it's important to note, if your computer's MBR is broken, more than likely your data for your OS is okay. It simply means your MBR needs to be fixed and or restored. So you might be asking, what in the world does this have to do with Linux? Well, the problem is, by default, Windows OS will simply not allow you to choose an operating system at the MBR level. So we have to set up an MBR that allows you to either choose Windows or Linux. So let's say you install Linux and you don't set your MBR up correctly. Well, what will happen is Windows doesn't care. Uh, Windows will just boot up into Windows and not allow you to choose the Linux operating system. So during the boot up process, the Windows bootloader will simply load Windows and won't give you a choice. So for example, let's say we install Linux and during the install we didn't set up uh, some sort of uh, MBR. So what will happen is when you restart your computer, the process will just boot right into Windows because the Windows bootloader wasn't modified or changed. And what will happen is you will simply load into Windows and the user won't be given a choice uh, which operating system they would like to boot into. So what we need to do is we need to give the user a choice at the MBR level. Would you like to boot into Linux or would you like to boot into Windows? This is what we're looking to set up. Now I'm going to give you two options with pros and cons to each option. The first is using a Linux bootloader. This is called Grub2. Now this plays nicely with Windows and Linux and does a great job auto-detecting Windows. 
this is the default setup with distros like Ubuntu. During the actual install video coming up in the future, uh, I will reference this as the grub2 method if this is the method you prefer. This method works for most people. Now, here's the downside. Sometimes during major service pack updates, uh, the Windows operating system will decide to overwrite the grub2 bootloader. So, Windows basically thinks that grub2 should not exist. This also happens if you, in, if you reinstall the Windows operating system. Uh, during the reinstallation of the Windows operating system, the Grub2 bootloader will be replaced with the Windows bootloader. So what does this mean? Basically, you are left with a machine that will only boot into Windows. Again, your Linux install is probably fine. Uh, it is simply at the MBR level that you no longer have a choice of which operating system you want to use. So I found if you're going to use the grub2 method, the easiest thing to do is install Windows first, then install Linux. If Windows does happen to overwrite grub2, uh, you will need to fix your MBR so you can once again boot into Linux. Now the pros to this approach is that grub2 can be fixed either by a USB stick or a live CD. Check out the link below uh, of someone else's video that does a great job showing you how to fix grub2. Okay, now we're going to go on to the second option. This is what I will refer to as the Windows method uh, during the full-blown install video. Now this is actually how I have my MBR set up. Uh, essentially we're going to use a third-party software to help us configure the Windows MBR. This is how our setup will look on the diagram. EasyBCD will install and configure the Windows MBR and allow you to choose a different operating system during the boot up process. Now during the Linux install, instead of installing Grub 2.0 to the very first sector of your hard drive, which is the default setting when you're installing Linux, you will instead install it to the Linux partition that you are installing Linux on. Now don't worry, uh, I will show you how to do this during the full-blown uh, install video so you can set this up properly. So what will happen is it'll look something like this. We will have the Windows MBR with choices. Grub2 will still need to be installed for Linux to boot, but instead it'll be on the Linux partition. So when you look at the diagram, if you choose to boot into Windows, it will go right into Windows. If you choose to boot into Linux, you will then go to the Grub menu. So it'll be kind of a two-step process when booting into Linux. From the Grub menu, you can then choose what Linux curl you want to boot into thus booting into Linux. If you choose to go this route, uh, keep in mind that after the first time you install Linux, you will not boot into Linux uh, until you tweak your MBR. You will have to do that from the Windows operating system after you've installed Linux. Also, keep in mind this program only works with Vista and Windows 7. Uh, to my knowledge, this program doesn't work with XP and I have no idea about the up and coming Windows 8. Now the pros to this approach is that you can do it from Windows operating system and everything is done graphically with little to no commands uh, unlike fixing Grub2. Also if you need to reinstall Windows after you have already installed Linux, again it's very easy to fix the MBR. I've actually done this many times with my setup and so far no issues. If you need to rescue the Windows MBR, uh, meaning set it back to the very very uh, default that the Windows operating system uh, when you do a fresh install, you can always do that using your Windows CD and overwrite the EasyBCD's settings. Now if you don't have a CD, you can always make one, and I'm not sure if you can fix the Windows MBR using a USB stick, so that may be a potential downfall uh, when compared to the Grub2 method. For a cool video on how to fix your MBR using the Windows Rescue CD, uh, watch this video. Now keep in mind if you use the Windows Rescue CD to fix the MBR, uh, it'll go back to, as I said, the very, very default of the MBR, which means it'll only boot Windows. So obviously, uh, if you do need to rescue your MBR doing this method, and you still have your Linux partition up, you will need to reconfigure EasyBCD before you can once again boot into Linux. Okay, now it's time to see how EasyBCD works. So open the web browser and go to this site, neosmart.net uh, forward slash EasyBCD. And once you're on the site, you're gonna scroll down to the bottom and you're gonna click the register. If you want, you can buy the commercial version, but uh, we're gonna do the non-commercial free version. Then scroll down and if you want, you can put in your name and email or you can just click the download. 
and then just save this to your hard drive. If you do find the uh, software useful, uh, feel free to, uh, to donate. Okay, and once you have this uh, downloaded, uh, just install this like any normal program. I already have this installed, so I'm not going to go through that, but it's just like running any executable on the Windows operating system. And then we are going to open up EasyBCD, and currently this is version 2.1.2. So we can open that up. Uh, obviously, you're going to need administrative privileges in order to mess around with your MBR. OK, at this point, before you touch anything, I should give you a warning. Obviously, if you hose your MBR, you will not be able to boot into anything. You won't be able to boot into Windows or Linux or whatever you have set up. So my recommendation is look at the troubleshooting videos, understand those. Um, again, I have not really had any issue with the MBR. Um, I have restored it just so I know how to do this. Uh, but you should always know how to restore something uh, in case the worst does happen. Now, if you want to make a backup of your uh, MBR before you touch anything, uh, feel free to do that. You're just going to click right here. And then this is where um, you're going to say that you are going to back up your, uh, uh, your current MBR. So uh, save it anywhere you want. I'm just going to throw my downloads for now. Don't forget to give it a file name. I'm just going to call this test. And then just click the backup settings. You'll see down here it says BCD backed up successfully. Now if you ever need to restore your previous um, uh, MBR, you can just say recreate repair boot files. Now keep in mind you can only repair from this uh, program if you are actually able to boot into Windows 7 in my case. So if you cannot boot into Windows 7, obviously you cannot use this to back up your MBR. Okay, and now that we've gotten that kind of out of the way, uh, this is how the program works. Um, I've already, you can see here, this is uh, the text mode, um, and I've already got my Linux and my Windows 7 set up, but uh, you can go to uh, the edit boot menu. Uh, for you, you'll probably just have one entry. Um, obviously, you're going to have to do this after you've installed Linux, right? If you're trying to do this before you've installed Linux, it's only going to see one operating system because obviously you only have one operating system on your system. So once you install Linux, you're going to boot back into Windows and then you're going to say add a new entry. Now what you'll do is you'll click the Linux. Um, you will look for the Grub2. Uh, I'm assuming that that's what you've used. If you've any used any uh, of the later flavors of Ubuntu, um, anything I think from uh, like 11.10 on, I think is the default is Grub2. So you're gonna uh, just say Grub2. Uh, you can name this whatever you want. Um, and then you're just going to say add entry. Now, once you uh, add the entry successfully, you can go to the edit menu. It should show up here, whatever you called it. And then here, this is where you can change uh, stuff around. You can uh, uh, change the default uh, to Windows 7 or Linux. You can rename them. You can delete them. Obviously, if you delete any of the entries, you will not be able to boot into those. So uh, the bad part is if you deleted Windows 7, um, then you would have no way of getting back into Windows 7. Therefore, you could not get back into EasyBCD. So uh, don't do that. Um, you can also change how long you want uh, the, the, the default to stay up before you um, uh, automatically boot into it. So uh, I just have it set at 10 seconds. So if I restart and I walk away, the default will be Linux, and then it'll go right into Linux. I have 10 seconds to make my choice at the NBR level. So once you are satisfied with your settings, you would click Save Settings, and this would write uh, to the text file uh, that you see here. If you chose the Grub2 method, if everything was successful after you've installed the Linux operating system, this is what Grub2 will look like. Notice here I can uh, choose either Linux, whatever kernel I want, uh, I can choose a memory test, I can, I, and I can also choose to boot into Windows. If you chose the Windows method or the EasyBCD uh, bootloader, then this is what this will look like. Now at this point, if I choose Windows, I will boot right into Windows. Um, and if I choose Linux, then what I will do is I will actually then move into the grub part. So uh, it's, as I said in the beginning of the video, it's more of a two-step process. Next up will be file systems and how they relate to Linux and why they're so important. Be sure to check out my website, greenhornlinux.com. Thanks for watching.